Hello YouTube, this is Skating for Satori and today I'm going to share with you my 2022 Middle Age Skate Dad board setup with you and also give you a review of the Pal Peralta uh, Andy Anderson 7 ply maple board. Um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to share an update video with you uh, on what I've been riding lately and to give you a real world review after riding this board for the last six months. Um, it's not going to be like your typical YouTube unboxing review where somebody opens up the UPS package, holds the board up, looks at the graphic and says, yeah, this is great. I really like it. I'll be posting clips of me writing this actual board as I narrate this video. I also have to preface this by stating, as I do in all my videos, that the opinions shared are of my own and from the perspective of a middle-aged skateboarder who started riding the skate park the age of 42. So for me, this board has been set up for bull riding and carving, and for me, has not been set up for street, tech, or vert ramp. Another disclaimer is that uh, the video and commentary are completely unpaid and unsolicited by uh, Ace Trucks and also anybody at Skate One and the family of products, which would include Pal Peralta. Uh, bones wheels, bones bearings, and bones bushings. Before I begin the actual review, uh, I want to take a moment to share a side story of why I like Andy Anderson and ride his pro model and try to support him. And it's not because I think that the board magically transforms me into this elite skateboarder based on its design or shape or balance or how he's a very unique skateboarder where people have a very variety of opinions either for or against. Um, to the contrary, uh, my personal reason is that before he was quote unquote Andy Anderson, and by that meaning uh, Pal Pro Team Rider you know, has his own pro model or an Olympian, I saw him in several videos introducing skateboarding as a form of alternative occupational therapy for children on the autism spectrum. And one such video uh, featuring him was uh, him coaching and mentoring a young child up in Vancouver, Canada area. His name is Brayden, or AKA Killer B. If you follow this channel for a while uh, or have seen our mini documentary, Justin's Journey, you'll know that we searched for an instructor or a clinic for a very long time unsuccessfully. In the end, it turned out to be a personal blessing because I continue to enjoy skateboarding at the age of 51 and have incremental progression. But there were some hardships along the way where I had to learn how to skateboard at the age of 42 and then internalize it and digest it and then figure out a way of how to teach my son in a way that it would reach him. So in this video, I think Andy, he's around probably 16 or 17 years old. And I just found it that so great at such a young age that he had the openness, the compassion, the courage, and also the ability to take on that responsibility of teaching a young child on the autism spectrum how to skate. And after teaching him and riding with him for you know several years together, they then started visiting schools uh, to give demos. Uh, skateboarding demos on and talk about anti-bullying, autism, and also share their passion and positive aspects of skateboarding to elementary school children as part of a community campaign. So when I view Brayden, aka Killaby, or his father's Instagram feed, uh, it seems like they are still connected, still uh, ride together when um, uh, Andy visits his hometown up in Vancouver. Uh, so a long-term maybe even a lifetime uh, friendship has been formed and continues to get stronger. So that is really the reason why I sought out the Andy Anderson uh, deck originally in 2019 and then once again in 2022. These are a few pictures of the board when it was brand new. Both the flight deck and maple versions of this board are the same shape and dimensions. You can look these figures up on the Skate One website, but it is a uniquely shaped deck that is 9.13 inches wide, 32.8 inches long, 
and has a 6.8 inch nose and tail and comes with a 15 inch wheelbase. My board has been set up in the spirit of Donatello, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the green and purple colorway, outfitted with Ace 55 Classics, Bones Bushings, Bones Big Ball Bearings, Bones P5 in Street Park Formula in 60 millimeter, Mob Grip, Shake Jump Hardware, and a single pig rail. I originally rode the flight deck version of this board in 2019, but I stopped riding it when the stiffness of the board, likely from the carbon fiber construction, was causing a lot of pain and soreness in my ankles after riding four to six times a week. During the worst parts of the COVID-19 pandemic, I went back to riding my anti-hero 9-inch orange board, which was made of 7th high maple construction, and noticed that it gave me less wear and tear on my ankles. Also, the Andy Anderson uh, Heron 9-inch flight deck was virtually impossible to find, and when they did get restocked, they would sell out in a matter of minutes, and then you would see people trying to flip them on eBay for three to four hundred dollars. Around April of this year, they began offering this board in 7 Fly Maple, so I decided to pick one up. And I've ridden this board at our local uh, skate parks in the SF Bay area, and also in Maui. And I've really enjoyed riding this board. As I was mentioning earlier, it seems to have a little bit more give and is easier on my ankles. One caveat is that, and this is purely subjective, is another fellow, his name is John Bishop, in his review of the same board, he stated that the maple board felt stiffer to him. But I would recommend watching his channel to get to one, see some really good skateboarding, and also to get his review and perspective on his board setups, including the Andy Anderson. For a middle-aged skateboarder like myself, the board is very wide and stable, with a longer wheelbase for riding the bowls and doing things like carving, grinds, and flyouts. I don't know if this board makes you ride faster or gives you more speed as some other people have commented in their reviews, but it is definitely a fast and stable board and you're able to lock in your feet at the pocket and the concave at the front bolts to pump and gain speed through the corners. Despite its larger size, it is a board that turns well and is maneuverable through a range of small to large size bowls. For the ease of doing ollies, flip tricks, rails, and blocks, although I don't skate this stuff much, uh, the board does have enough pop for me to ollie over some small stuff or onto a curb, no problem. Also, the board is flippable, and I've on occasion with other dads worked on things like kick flips and heel flips, and uh, the board is very stable when riding things like rails and blocks at the skate park. What I also like about the maple board is that although it does have a steeper concave compared to other boards, its edge is not as sharp as the flight decks, and I've, admit, I've managed to avoid slamming by not catching my shoe on the board when bailing and then finding myself looping out and having it turned into a slam. This happened many times on the original flight deck model. Another observation, and I would advise that you take this with a grain of salt, is that in a recent interview uh, video with Dan Corrigan, another Palatine rider, Andy mentions that his new shape was evolved from him liking his board after it wears in and the corners become a little bit more rounded. And there actually might be some truth to that statement because I too also enjoy and feel like the board rides the best for me a few months in. And what I mean by few months in would probably be for most others uh, maybe a few days or a few weeks of riding this board where the corners of the board start to round and then the board begins to compact just a little bit anywhere between an eighth or a quarter inch after taking repeated impacts. To give you my unbiased review of the Andy Anderson Heron Maple and, flight, and both the flight deck after riding them for several years, 
and also riding other boards along the way is that this particular model's shape, size, and dimensions works great for what and how I ride the skate park. If I were to give you an overall review of this board, yes, I would definitely recommend it to another middle-aged skate dad. If I had to assign it a numerical rating on the 1 to 10 scale, with 10 being the highest, I would give it an 8.5. The only zonk on that is the cost of the, of the board is more expensive than other boards. I think that there is a high likelihood that I will ride either this model or the anti-hero orange or possibly both um, into the sunset. So just to recap, here are the pros and cons of this board. The pros. The board is sized well and gives me an extra sense of stability and confidence for bowl and transition riding. Second, its large size gives you a lot of real estate to work with and is forgiving on some of those tricks. Third, the maple board has been easier on the wear and tear on my feet and ankles, especially when riding four to six times a week. And then the last pro is that it is a PAL product, so you know that you're going to get a quality deck that has been engineered with input from the pro and is constructed well. If, I, if there are some cons with the board, um, the first one is that the board is big and it takes some energy to move around for things like disasters or flip tricks. The second is that the board could feel heavy, especially if you're used to like an 8, 825 or 85 with 54, 52 to 54 millimeter wheels and narrower trucks. And then to some people, the board may not feel as nimble or responsive uh, because you need to have a wider truck at least an 8.75 and also it has a 15 inch wheelbase and I would recommend larger wheels ranging from 56 to 60 millimeter. And then the fourth con is that this board can be expensive. So I think these run about 85 to 95 dollars depending on the shop when most maple 9 inch boards are priced in the 60 to 65 dollar range. So that equates to a 30% increase or difference in price and even more so for the flight deck version. And then lastly, I think there's also one hybrid pro slash con of this board, which in my opinion has been I think a kiss and a curse for this board. The early promotional videos of this board gave an impression that the design of this board was so unique and so well engineered that it was going to make you a better skater overnight and also change the direction of your skateboarding progression or even accelerate this, your, the, your skateboarding progression and it almost gave this the board a mystical quality to it and many many people rushed out to buy this board or try to take advantage of the situation and flip them for three to four times the purchase price on eBay but when it comes down to it with the Heron model, either Mape or Flight Deck, ultimately it's a skate deck. And ultimately it's not a magical wand that transforms you into a higher level of skateboarding. You, as its owner and rider, still need to put in the time and energy to learn how to ride it at the skate park and learn the tricks. So one last thing I'd like to share with all of you is please keep in mind that this is just one review and opinion. I'm sure that through experimentation, you'll find the setup and board that provides you with what you're seeking out of your skateboarding and provide you with the fun and freedom that skateboarding brings. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and allowing me to share my 2022 setup of the Andy Anderson Heron 7-Fly Maple Board with you. And I hope to be able to ride with you at the skate park. Thank you. Thanks again for watching.